Hey guys, it's Bree here from Blossom and Branch Farm and today we are going to be looking at my 6x10 greenhouse and we're going to talk about how I grow $20,000 worth of wholesale plants out of this greenhouse. Let's go. Greenhouse growing is a great way to save money, growing your own seeds, and while we think of greenhouses as being expensive, this one has saved me tons of money. Not only is it cheaper to grow your own plants from seed, you also have a lot more control over how they're grown, what they're being grown with, what kind of medium they're being grown in, and you just have more transparency to the whole process, which I appreciate, especially when I'm looking at growing my own food and putting things into my soil. Right now we are at peak production, so we are just getting ready to swap out all of our cool season producers for our warm season producers. So we'll be starting the more frost sensitive plants here now that we're about seven weeks before our last frost. We're gonna start getting everything else out of the greenhouse and start getting our next batch plants in the greenhouse. Now, if you've watched our videos, you know that we actually use a cattle panel arbor and that serves as kind of a makeshift greenhouse in the winter time. And I've actually sectioned off a part of that tunnel to serve as a temporary greenhouse for some of these plants because we're expecting a snow next week. I want to get these hardened off. I don't want them in the pampered environment in the greenhouse and I want more space. So we're going to move some of these plants into our other space. So we'll take a look at that space as well. Let's go. So here is our greenhouse. It is a six by 10 greenhouse and actually it's by a company called Juliana out of Denmark. And unfortunately they don't sell in the US here anymore and we got this one secondhand. But the size, if you wanna know, is six by 10 and it's a tempered glass greenhouse. So here we are looking at the inside of the greenhouse. You can see how much we have going on in here. It is absolutely jam packed. Now a six by 10 greenhouse is not very large. You can see we have room for some baker's shelves. So we have three baker's shelves. We have one here one here and one here. And over on this side, I just have a little bench that my husband made me. Sometimes I use it to work, but other times it is overflow for plants like it is right now. Now, I get a lot of questions on the shelves and whether we use lights. You can go back and watch our greenhouse video. The answer is yes and no. When it's really full in here, we put lights on the middle shelf because that's the one that tends to get blocked the most of light. But usually we don't have things on those middle shelves, just on the top and bottom shelves. So everything gets plenty of light because we have glass all the way around. And it is key that we have glass going all the way down to the floor. That's what helps us utilize that lower space in this greenhouse. If we had a foundation brick wall or a wood wall on the bottom, we wouldn't be able to utilize the space quite as well. If you're new to my channel, you might not know that we utilize a method called soil blocking. And soil blocking is just a method of making little tiny cubes of soil instead of growing in trays. This is very space saving for us because with these large trays that we use, we're not having to worry about all the space that gets taken up by big cells. These take up quite a bit of room. Natives are some of the plants that I tend to grow myself because they tend to be very expensive. So here we actually have some prairie drop seed grasses we've been growing. And these are some of the only things that I grow in a plug tray. And you can see why. It's because their roots get so long they really benefit from being in a tall, long tray like these deep root 50 trays. These trays are slightly longer, but they're also narrower and they're made out of fiberglass. So I'm never gonna have to replace them. They're very sturdy. You can see I can hold it with one hand and it holds the weight of all of these plants because they're not plastic. That's super key. I'm not gonna have to rebuy any of this. So not only is this cost efficient, it's also space efficient and it's also eco-friendly because we're not going to have to rebuy any of this stuff. Those are the slightly larger soil blocks, but most of what we grow here for the farm are these mini soil blocks. So these are actually three quarter inch soil blocks. And the soil blocker that these came from looks something like this. You just stamp your blocker into your soil, you pop out your cubes, and bam, you've got these little blocks. So each of these trays holds 320 of these seedlings. That's a lot of seedlings. Here we have one of my personal favorite flowers. These are Lysianthus, and you can see they grow quite well in these soil blocks. We just plant them right out from these mini sizes. We actually have a whole video on how to grow Lysianthus, so if you're interested in that, you can watch more over on that video, but we do plant them out right from this size, which really helps us save space. These are about ready to go out in about a week or two. I love growing my onions in soil blocks. You can see how healthy they are and you can be a lot more selective about what varieties you grow. We'll just pull these right up and out and plant them right into the ground just like this. So we have tons of onions here. This will be a whole year of onions worth for my family. So each of these shelves has three racks and we can fit five of these trays on each shelf. That's a total of 15 of these trays on each of these sets of shelving. So if we total that up, it's 320 plants times five trays times three shelves times three shelving units 
times five equals. If we're at full capacity here in our greenhouse, that's 14,400 seedlings growing in here at one time. But that's not all. We grow in two different successions. So we start one succession of our cool loving plants in January. So things like lisianthus, snapdragons, peas, we can do lettuces, chamomile, or lia, foxglove, bells of Ireland, phlox, onions, all of those things we can start and plant out before last frost. Usually we can plant them out about six to seven weeks before our last frost. Once we plant out that first batch is when we start our second batch. Then we start the cold sensitive things. So the things that actually can't handle a frost and will have to go out after last frost. So once we get all of this stuff out, we start our next round, things like zinnias, sunflowers, celosia, basil. If we're pre-sprouting any dahlias, we can start those in here. And then second successions of any of those things that we're growing. So we'll do second successions of celosia or bee balm, just so that we have continuous blooms throughout the season. So then we can pack our greenhouse with another 14,400 seeds. That's a total of 28,800 seeds that I can grow in this greenhouse in one season. So let's do the math on that. If I'm buying in wholesale plugs or plants, there are a couple issues with that. Number one is that I don't like to buy plugs or plants that have been grown elsewhere because usually you don't know what's in them. You don't know what's been in the soil. You don't know what they've been treated with pesticide wise. You don't know what they've been fertilized with. I just, maybe I'm a bit of a control freak, um, but I like to know what's in my plants. I just like to know. I want to know that what I'm growing is safe for my bees and safe for my family. So with that being said, I like to grow things for myself. Number two is the ecological side of this. So on the wholesale side, as a flower farmer or a market grower, if you're ordering in plugs, usually that comes with a pretty significant carbon footprint when we're looking at shipping, making sure that those plants are staying climate controlled, takes a lot of styrofoam often, and it's expensive. So on average, a plug tray, if I were to be buying these in, would be about 125 plants. So if I divide 28,800 by 125, that would be 230 flats of plugs that I would have to be buying. Now let's say that those are on average $70 a piece, some are more, some are less, but on average, if we say $70, that's $16,128 worth of plants. But if you're ordering in plugs, you also have to pay for shipping and you have to pay shipping for each box and each box only holds three plug trays. So 230 plug trays divided by three would be 77 boxes that we would have to have shipped. Each box is around $75 to ship. So that would be $5,750 in shipping alone. So that actually brings our total to over $20,000 if I were to be buying in all of the plugs to plant my flower farm. The other thing to remember when we're talking about these numbers is that this is wholesale pricing. So for farmers, for growers, for professional growers, we get wholesale pricing on these plants, which means for a tray of 125 plants, it's $70, which is less than a dollar per plant. That is not a price that you could get at your nursery. Anyone will tell you that if you go to a nursery and buy a potted up plant, which is what a lot of these nurseries resell, they buy in these big plug trays, they pot them up into bigger pots, they sell them to you and they mark them up. So I think the cheapest plant that I bought, even in a small container is maybe a six pack for $5, $6. So at least a dollar per plant. So if I were to mark these up to retail price, you're looking at a lot more money. So you can see how gardening, flower farming, market farming could get very expensive. If you were buying in all of these plants, you'd have a huge upfront investment and you wouldn't even know what was going into your plants. So when you can, I would really encourage you to grow from seed. As you can see, it doesn't take a huge space. You don't have to have a large fancy greenhouse. But depending on how much gardening you do, how much you grow for your family, a greenhouse is actually a very good investment. And you can often find them secondhand or you can build them out of old windows. You can build them out of polycarbonate. They don't have to be expensive, but there are a few things that you'll wanna make sure you pay attention to when you're selecting a greenhouse. So pop over to our greenhouse video and watch that if you want to learn more about how we use this space. For now, let's take a look at some of the things that we're growing out here that we are getting ready to plant out into the world. Remember we did our test of different seed starting materials. So here we have the mix of vermiculite, peat, and perlite. Here we have our miracle Grow, which has slowed down on growth. It was doing well at first and now it's kind of slowed. Here's our black gold, still looking absolutely terrible. Over here we have our Jiffy, Jiffy looking okay. Still our best performer is this one here. This is my Coconut Coir Coco Loco Green Sand recipe. But look at what has been up and coming. The wool pellet recipe. And remember that wool pellet recipe really did not look good 
at first because I was watering it too much. The wool really doesn't take that much water, but now look at the greenness and the leaves on the wool pellet tomato, even versus my other favorite recipe. So definitely more experiments with wool coming up. All right, guys, so I'm here in our cattle panel tunnel. Now we have a whole nother video on how we made this structure. Uh, it is a 32 foot long structure and it's six feet wide. So definitely a good overflow space for my greenhouse. Now, usually I don't use this as a greenhouse space because in the winter, it doesn't hold temperatures that are that much warmer than the outside, but I'm also not heating this structure. So if I were to heat this structure, it would probably actually make a decent greenhouse because it's lined with two layers of plastic and that's actually a better insulator than my glass greenhouse. So all I've done is I've set up some shelves in here. I can pop anything that's ready to go out or close to getting ready to go out that I need to harden off into this structure and therefore I can make myself some room in my greenhouse. So the reason that I've sectioned off one side of this greenhouse is because that's going to allow me to keep the heat into this section if I need to. So I do have a little greenhouse space heater that I can plug in. It's moisture rated and I can plug that in and put this into the space if it does get very cold. I have my little wireless thermometer that will alert to my phone if it drops below a certain level. Now Lysianthus are pretty cold tolerant so as long as it stays above 28 it should be good. It's only supposed to get down to a low of 34 tonight so we should be good on that front. Usually we we'll hold around five degrees warmer than outside air temperature in the structure. But if I were to heat it, I could hold it quite a bit warmer. So here is the entrance to the tunnel and we do have some things planted, some cold tolerant things in here like our lettuces. We have some carrots actually germinating over here. We have our ranunculus growing over on this side of our tunnel. And then over here are our shelves where we can put any seeds that are hardening off. And you can see how we've sectioned off. We've just taken another sheet of the greenhouse film and put it on over the top. So over here, we could actually still have stuff planted if we wanted to. Over here is the whole other side of the tunnel where nothing is actually growing right now. Definitely warmer here on this side. And again, because it's sectioned off, if I do need to heat, it will help hold the heat in this side where we have things planted and not heat the whole long structure. All right, guys, so that is it. It's really nothing fancy, but this is a great overflow structure for my smaller greenhouse for that little bit of overlap time. So whether we run into a blizzard or some bad weather right about when we should be planting out all of the cold tolerant things that are in the greenhouse before we plant the cold sensitive things, this is a good little overflow structure. And if you've seen our video on it, you know, we can overwinter some things in here. We can grow things in the shoulder season. And then in the summer, it's a great little trellis. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today and checking out the greenhouse. It's a really great little greenhouse. You really don't have to have a huge or fancy greenhouse in order to grow a lot of flowers and produce for your family. It really doesn't take a big structure. It doesn't have to be super fancy. You can make it work. All right, guys, we'll see you back here at the farm soon.